bless you. Anyone in here driving a, a Dodge, new Dodge license number WX2129, uh, parked across the street, there's left their lights, headlights and all on. And if that uh, someone is driving that car, why, you slip out and turn your lights off. It's just on the left-hand side of the street, right down 8th Street. I guess that's the New Albany number, WX2129, a red Dodge, new Dodge. That's uh, at least a... Uh, 59, 60 is somewhere along there. Now, I didn't know whether there was someone in here or someone just uh, from somewhere. <laughs> All right, it was. That's a, that's a good thing. Now, I ain't going to say just the ladies forget that because I do too. <laughs> well, it's certainly good to be back again tonight in the service and to have this fine time of fellowship together around the Word. Are you enjoying it? Yes. Yeah. Right, we're just having a wonderful, wonderful time. And now we uh, are trusting that God will help us to continue on. Now, my brother went and got a blackboard here, but it's, it's too short. <laughs> it just don't reach up high enough, so tomorrow I'll try to fix it up here, swing it up above, and uh, make it so I want to draw out some different things that I'd like to explain so you just, and just so you be sure that you really get it. It was uh, last night, or yesterday it was, my little girl, Sarah, it was kind of cute. Mother and I was looking over a little paper. She was taking my notes. And she had everything down just right, Isaiah and Matthew and everything. And right at the end of the, the paper she had, and, and death, a grave hasn't got any more victory in it, and uh, the uh, death had his finger pulled out. <laughs> She's about seven years old. And then she, instead of having the revelation, she said, the book of revolutions. <laughs> well, that shows her interest in trying to get something anyhow. I think, I think Brother Collins, little girl, and she sat back there and they wrote revolutions. They have revolutions, Brother Neville says. He's agreeing with her. I guess we all have to do that. Well, we're... Really having a great time. My, the Lord is blessing. I went in to study this morning in the room just right after I got the children to school and just come out a while ago. Just having a wonderful time. Last night studied kind of late, too. About 2.30 in the morning, some people come down from up north. Got, us, got me up to pray for a little girl that was dying. And uh, I'm sure the Lord will let her get well. They just come down all the way from Bedford, Indiana, to ask the request that the little girl be prayed for then. Two men had been in this service last night, drove all the way up there, and then all the way back down, and then all the way back again, probably all night and driving. And so um, it's uh, good to know that people have that kind of confidence and believe God. Oh, it's a great day that we're living in, and we're... Expecting now on these church ages to just get more and more. Now we're trying to start just a little early each night. So we let out early. You like that better? And that lets the people that has to work get home so they can go to work. Last night we were out at uh, about five, ten minutes after nine, or at least I was finished. And so we're happy to have all the visiting ministers in with us tonight. And uh, uh, Brother Junior Jackson, Brother... Uh, Carpenter and our brother from the church there and many others on a platform here and out in the meeting. And I was told today that a very precious friend of mine uh, that was with me in the mission fields, brother and sister Andrew from way into deep China, was in the meeting last night. What a wonderful time we had together over in the Jamaica this last year. We had a great time. I was up to their home, and my, if I wonder if Brother and Sister Andrew is present tonight here in the, in the meeting. This building's not built just right, so yes, sitting way back in the back. I wonder if you just do as much as stand up to your feet, Brother and Sister Andrew, just a moment. The Lord bless you. We are so glad to see you, Brother and Sister Andrew. I invited them to come by last year when I was over there. Now. Not saying in their presence, I was going to say more, but I won't say it now. <laughs> but uh, they are what I call real missionaries. Amen. If they get in tomorrow night, having to speak here just before we 
come in. Now I want you to hear what really um, mission fields mean when it's back so far in the interior till they didn't even have nothing to... Well, there I think it's years and years and years is back there and they never even had as much as seen an automobile or a train or anything else for years and years. And how sister would make their bread out of how she'd beat it up. And Now that's real missionary. Brother Andrews had a needle and thread and he was a doctor. He sewed them all up when they got ripped up. And I think when the child's children come along, Sister Andrews is probably midwife and Brother Andrews' doctor. They just depended on them. And then when the missions of, from England, the Pentecostal missions of England, uh, said they were too old to go back in the field, I'll just tell you how much missionary they are. They wasn't going to take no easy chair and sit down. They went right back on their own, back out into uh, Jamaica, and out there missionary now. Brother Fred Softman and I here had the privilege of going to their home and visiting with them, and what a lovely time they showed us as, as sweet as Christians could be. And I tell you, I don't say this to, I'd rather give a little of rosebud now than a reef after a gong. I tell you, they're really Christians. I told my wife that... Uh, Sister Andrews is one of the sweetest, nicest Christian women a person could ever meet. She just her character is molded into Christ, too. and Brother Andrews too. So I'm sure if you all seen them, who would have stood up? I want all this church to shake their hands and to hear them before they get away. Now, tomorrow, the Lord willing, we're tomorrow night. We're starting on this second church age. Tonight, we're starting on the first church age. I'm sure the Lord has a blessing in store for us. And remember, as I said before, sometimes on these things, we might disagree upon them as far as, as the theology is concerned. And uh, most of my dates I take from the authentic uh, historians, which really not interested in any side. They just wrote down facts, whatever it was, what the churches did. And, I, of course, the divine part of the interpretation, I try to place it up on there myself the best that I know how. And sometimes if I uh, speak a little harsh or rash or like that, I don't mean it in that way. Everybody knows that. It knows me. But I don't mean to do that. I just want, but in order to make a point stick, you just like driving a nail in a board. If you just tack it on there, it won't hold. You've got to drive it down and clinch it to make it whole. And that's what I'm trying to do. So it, uh, it isn't that I would try to disagree because I speak for all denominations and so forth. So it doesn't, that, I always said like branding cattle. I remember years ago I was sitting one day when they had the spring roundup, taking the cattle up into the forest. And I helped drive the cattle up to the, what they call the drift fence where the Hereford Association grazes the, the Troublesome River Valley. I was sitting there with my leg hung over the horn of the saddle watching the ranger as he was watching these cattle go through the drift fence. Now you have to have, um, that's when you're going over on government property, and you have to be able to raise a ton of hay before you can put a cow on the pasture. And each ranch produces so much hay, so many cattle, then they can have them. Now, they was going through there with all kinds of brands on them. Some of them had the Bar X. Mr. Grimes, right next to us there, had the Diamond T, a T on one end, a diamond. There's that Lazy K right up the head of Troublesome River. Ours was the Turkey Track. Just below us was the Tripod. And there's all kinds of brands going through that gate. And I noticed the ranger never paid much attention to those brands. He never looked at them. Sometimes he's on the left side of the cow, so he couldn't have seen the brand. So it, uh, it wasn't that he was watching the brand, but one thing he was sure of, that no cow went through there unless it had a blood tag in its ear. It had to be a thoroughbred Hereford or it couldn't go on that forest. The brand didn't make much difference, but it was a blood tag. And I think that's what will be at the judgment. It won't be what brand we're wearing, but he'll look for the blood tag. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Am I just a little wrong, Gene Emma? This, this has, uh, rebound. rebound, all right. It's a transposition in between the two. Is that this, right? This is a good one, and that one's not too good. All right. Thank you, Brother Gene. All right. Now, we're going to try to get out early again tonight so we can get back tomorrow night and take these ages. And I tell you, 
It's so hard for me to hold back some of them great things, lay them down along the edge of the road. Just try to get them out all in one night. You know, that's kind of my nature. But we just have to hold it back a little till each night. Now, just before we start opening the grand book, wonder if we could just stand for just a moment for a change of position. And <clears throat> as we stand up, those who can, and let's bow our heads now solemnly for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are again approaching Thy great holy throne, coming without waving of faith because we are coming because we've been bid to come. We could not say we are coming in the name of a certain church or denomination or in the name of this church or in our own name because we would not be sure of that whether we could get this audition with God or not. But when Jesus told us, you ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. Then we know we come in Jesus' name. You're going to hear us, Father. We're so glad as we read of the martyrs of the days gone by, how they seal their testimony with their own blood. <clears throat> then, Father, it makes us feel that we're doing so little in this day. And I pray thee, Lord, that thou will forgive our uh, our negligence as we are about thy business. And we pray that you'll anoint us afresh as we read of thy word and see the suffering that has been brought about in the days gone by to make up the canon of this great ransom church of the living God. I pray the Heavenly Father to speak tonight through us because we don't know what to say. We're just waiting and we're asking this prayer here because we're in the presence of God in His church. And we ask that the Holy Spirit that's on these people will unite its powers together tonight and shake forth the gospel into every heart that'll give us a new stand and a new hope for the age that is coming on. Grant it, Lord, for we see the fig tree putting forth its buds and Israel becoming a nation and the Gentile days fading away and numbered and we're looking for the coming of the great Redeemer, our Lord Jesus Christ. Walk among us, Lord, as it's said tonight. You walk in the midst of the candlesticks and walk among us tonight, Lord. And warn our hearts of the evil that's ahead and give us understanding of thy word. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Now, as I have said, each day I try to get just as much wrote down on paper as I possibly can of times, places, and so forth, because it's a historical event that we are approaching. It's been a history, and now we're coming down also pattern it to the time. Now, Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening, rather, we had a glorious time. I'm sure we did. I did myself, and uh, the... Revelation. Now, what are we studying? The revelation of Jesus Christ. And what did we find that God showed the revelation of who He was? The first thing we find of all revelations that God made known who He was. That Jesus was no third person of a trinity. He was the trinity in full. He was both Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And that was a revelation four times spoken in the same chapter, that he was the almighty God, he that was, which is, and shall come, the root and offspring of David. Now we find out then that in these things we're going to try to clear up the whole matter because I don't know when we'll ever hear it again, maybe never, until time shall be no more and fade into eternity. <coughs> And now, as I say, there may be many brethren, teachers, far better qualified to speak this than I am, and probably could get a better interpretation to it, but God has placed it upon my heart to do it, and therefore, 
I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't say just exactly what I thought was right. Yes. See? Amen. So I, I always want clear before God at all times that I have not shunned, as Paul said, to warn you day and night with tears, that the church might be in standing then, if there's any loss, the blood be not upon my hands, because I want to be clear of all man's blood at that time. Yes, amen. So if you differ, well, that's just in a nice, friendly way, that'll just be fine. Now, but maybe the Lord will reveal something that will help us all together. Now, the first thing we see that He revealed Himself. Now, we understand who He was. Now, on down as I made that quotation about the sprinkling and baptism in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost being a Catholic baptism and not a Protestant or a New Testament baptism. I hope I've made that clear. And I've asked any person that would show a text of Scripture where anybody was ever baptized in the Bible or until the Lady of Sin Council where they formed the Catholic Church where anybody was ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, please come show me. And I'd put on my back a false prophet and go through the street. Now, I just make that not to be hard, but just to show you that it's the truth. Amen. See? Amen. Now, then the Bible reveals in here that He is the Almighty God, flesh among us. Amen. See? No Father, Son, Holy Ghost. There's not three gods or one God chopped in three places. It's one God that worked in three offices, the Fatherhood, Sonship, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. God condescending from the Garden of Eden, trying to make His way back into human hearts to live and be sons and daughters of God again Amen. with Him. That's God above us, God with us, God in us. That's the difference. And now, those things, and the Bible reveals that, and it's thoroughly said it in the first chapter of Revelation, which is the only book in the Bible... In the New Testament, the whole canon of the New Testament is the only book that Jesus put his own seal upon. And he said the first of it, Blessed is he that readeth and he that heareth. And at the end he said, If any man shall take away any part of it or add anything to it, the same will be taken his part out of the book of life. So it's a curse for anyone to take anything away. This is the complete revelation of Jesus Christ. So if we make him three, you know what's happening. Amen. Your name goes out. And no one, no Protestant, no early church was ever believed in three gods. It was a great issue at the Nicene Council, and both of them went on limbs. Out this way is to say... The Trinitarian, the triune people that believed in the Trinity, which finally formed in the Catholic Church, they went to complete Trinity, making God three people. And there was one that believed that God was one, and they went on the other side to be a Unitarian. Both of them are wrong. God, can't, Jesus could not be His own Father, and neither can Jesus have a father and him be, be three gods. It, it could not work because if he's got a father and a father is another man besides him, then he had, and the Holy Ghost is another, he's an illegitimate child. Amen. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost was his father. Amen. And if we have the Holy Ghost, then it's not the Holy Ghost, it's the Father in us in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Using the office in us because once that a man called the ghost <laughs> comes back and sends us now. The same Jehovah God. Amen. Amen. There's not no three gods. Three gods is pagan and heathen. And it was brought over, and if you just stay through the week and not be prejudiced, but watch, take it history, take the same history as I do, or any, any history, just let's know it. All histories agree the same. Now, historians had nothing to do with any side. they just interested in stating facts, what happened. And watch exactly how that thing creeped in through Luther and come out through Wesley and then exposed in the last days. Yes, amen. The baptism in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Bless Jesus. Just watch where it come into the Catholic Church in the Dark Ages, come out through Luther, down through Wesley, but between Wesley and the Lady of Sin at the end, it was to be exposed. Yes. That's right. Now, and this is all history. 
and not only history, but it's the Bible. And now tonight, we are approaching seven church ages, which were seven churches that was in Asia Minor at the time of the writing of the book. These churches at that time must have had the characteristics of the church ages that was to come because that they were more churches than that, the Colossian church and many others at that time. But God picked these churches because of their characteristics. Now we find that him standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, he had in his hand a seven stars. And those seven stars, he said in the 20th verse of the first chapter, that they are seven angels to the seven churches. Now, in the Bible, they did not understand this revelation. Because what good would it do them to watch and wait if they know there'd be thousands of years before Jesus came? It was not given to them. Now, I say to this to you people here, you Catholic people, to you Lutheran, to you Methodist, and so forth, it was not given to Martin Luther, the light that's on the Word today. Right. Neither was it given to John Wesley. Amen. John Wesley preached sanctification that Luther passed over. Yeah. And the light comes as we have need of light. Yeah. God says it and it isn't opened up to us because it's hid to our eyes until the day that God's able to reveal it. Wonder what will be after we leave. Dude, I'm persuaded that there's very, very much more that we know nothing about. That is right. There's seven seals. If we take the complete book of Revelation, that's sealed on the back of the book. It even isn't written in the book. And them seals are to be opened during this church age. And the seven last mysteries of God is to be made known. Amen. Oh, I'd like to just keep it all winter and go through it. Yes, sir. The seven church ages, as Daniel heard the seven thunders, and forbidden and... John heard the voices and this book was sealed and the back of the book was sealed with seven seals. But in the days of these seals to be opened, the mystery of God would be finished. In other words, God would be known to His church, not in three people, but as one person. The mystery of God would be revealed. And when that was completely revealed, then the seven mysteries would open to the church. Because in there, the church would be living under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Him moving in and out and showing His signs of being alive and among us, living among us. And we are then worshiping the living Christ that's among us. Amen. Don't never look for big churches and big things. When we get to this Pentecostal age, you'll certainly see where they lost out. Yes, amen. The very church lady you'll see, it means rich, need them nothing. And naked, wretched, blind, miserable. Yes. And don't know it. Amen. See? They went off at you like great money and buildings and everything else. When the church has always been the, the outscours of the earth. Amen. They were hated by all people. Yes, cast out in alleys, anywhere they can live. Yes, amen. Read Hebrews 11 and take the last six or eight verses of it, how they wandered about in deserts and, sh and wearing sheepskins and goatskins and was destitute and afflicted and tormented. Those people that are how our testimony stand up against theirs in the day of the judgment. See? Those people in that day. Now, in this church age, we have seven churches. Now, I won't get it placed out. I don't think you can see it from here. Maybe if some of you could. I doubt it very much, but I'll try to make it, I know he couldn't sit down in here, make it seven church ages, I hold it on my hand so you understand. It begins, the church begin at Pentecost. Amen. Could anybody deny that? Amen. No, sir. The church began at Pentecost with a Pentecostal blessing and was ordained by Jesus Christ to continue on until the last day with the same message and the same blessing working in us. Amen. His last commission to his church, Mark 16, go into all the world, preach the gospel. These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. And how about to all the world, to whoever creature, black, brown, yellow, white, whatever creature it was. Preach the gospel to every creature. These signs shall follow them that believe. 
Now tonight we're aging in on that. Just start cutting in tonight. Each night cut off a bigger hunk of it until we get down to our own church age. Now, we find that that was his commission. Now the first church age was the church of Ephesus. The second church age was Samaria. The third church age was Pergus. The fourth church age was Thyatira. The fifth church age was Sardis. And the sixth church age was Philadelphia. And the seventh church age was Laodicea. Now the first church age started about A.D. 53 when Paul established the church in, in Ephesus on his missionary journey. He established the church at, at Ephesus, the Ephesian church, and was the pastor of it. So when he was beheaded in 66, making him about 22 years, the pastor of the Ephesian church. After his death, then we're told that St. Paul, or St. Uh, John, the divine, became the pastor of the church and carried on up into this age. And the church age lapped over to 170. Then, after the Ephesian church age from A.D. 53 until A.D. 170, then started in the Smyrna church age, which lasted from A.D. Uh, 170 until A.D. 312. Then come in the Pergus church age, and the Pergus church age began at 312 and lasted till A.D. 606. Then come in the Thyatira church age, and the church age of Thyatira began at 606 and went to 1520, the Dark Ages. And then the Sardis church age began at 1520 and lasted to 1750, the Lutheran age. Then from 1750, uh, the next age come in was the Philadelphian, Wesley age. That began at 1750 and lasted until 1906. And at 1906, the Lady Ocean Church age set in, and I don't know when it'll end. But I predict it'll be done by 1977. I predict, not the Lord told me, but I predicted according to a vision that was shown me some uh, years ago that five of those things has out of the seven has already taken place about how many remembers that vision in the church sure said it how that even Kennedy would be elected in this last election how that women would be permitted to vote how that Roosevelt would take the world to war how that Mussolini would go toward Ethiopia his first invasion and would take it that would be the end he'd die off after that how these great isms would rise up and all fall back into communism Hitlerism and Mussolini and Nazism and so forth would all fall back into communism. And 11 years beforehand, it said that we'd go to war with Germany and Germany would be fortified behind concrete. Imagine our lines. It happened just that way. So then after that would come to, place that, come to pass that science would increase so greatly until they would invent a car. The cars would become more like egg all the time. And that vision was told right here where the Church of Christ stands now at the old uh, orphan's home. Charlie Kern, perhaps in the building tonight, was living at the place at the time. One Sunday morning about 7 o'clock it happened. And it said, then it would come to pass that they'd invent a car that they didn't need a steering wheel in it. It'd be controlled with some kind of a power. They've got it now. They got it now. Magnetic power, radar control. They don't even just set your radar to where you're going. It takes you yourself. You don't have to stir now, and it said in there at that time there'd be a great woman stand up in the United States. <coughs> and she was dressed and beautiful, but she was cruel and hard. Now, I got princes on the vision, even the yellow paper said perhaps the Catholic Church. And the women being permitted to vote would help elect the wrong person for this nation. Yes, and that's what they've done. Yes. Exactly. Now, so that would be the beginning. Now, another thing it said. That then immediately at that, I saw this nation become as a smolder just blowed to bits. 
Now, if them things has happened, so is other. Yes, amen. We're at, that's the reason I'm here tonight trying to bring this and set it to this people at Jeffersonville because I'm fixing to enter the mission fields pretty soon again and don't know what time I may be called away or called away. I, I, we don't know that. And I want to be sure that I'm let the church know the hour they're living because Almighty God will hold me responsible for it. Now, now each one of these churches according to the scripture there had an angel and the angel was a how many knows what an angel means it's a messenger a messenger and if there were seven angels to the seven churches meant seven messengers now and there were stars in his hand and in his hand these these twelve these seven stars that was to reflect the light of his presence in the day of night that we were living in, as the stars reflect the sun to the earth, makes it light so we can walk and get around at night time. Now, we find out then that during this time that each one of those angels had a position in place and brethren, tonight we don't get to it because we know this angel of the first church, but it's going to be a mysterious and glorious thing to find and pull out of history before you the angels of these other churches. The angel of the first church was St. Paul. He founded it. God's messenger. The angel of the church of Ephesus was St. Paul. The church... Now, the reason... I, now, these others, you might disagree, but I sat there for days and days under inspiration until I felt the Holy Spirit strike me and anoint me for it. That's the reason I know. And watch these men that has been picked, if you're a historian... They, the same man that I have got here and know by revelation that they was the angels to the church, they had the same ministry that these did at the beginning. And that ministry cannot change. It must stay Pentecost all the way through. Yes, amen. Now, historians sitting here is going to disagree with me on this man. But on the church of Smyrna, Arrhenius is who I know that was the angel of that day. Polycarp, many of you will say it was Polycarp, brother. You say it was him. But Polycarp leaned more to the organization and to the Catholic uh, coming on religion. But Irenaeus was a man that spoke in tongues and had the power of God and signs followed him. He was God's angel life. And he pulled the light on over after Polycarp had been crucified or murdered, assassinated, then uh, Irenaeus is one of his students, and Polycarp was a student of St. Paul, or St. Uh, John. And then <coughs> Irenaeus taken his place, and he brought the light. And the angel of the light of uh, Pergus was a great St. Martin. I don't believe there was a greater man ever lived on earth outside of Jesus Christ than St. Martin. Power... The assassins come to him to cut his head off. He believed in signs and wonders and the Pentecostal blessing. And when they went to, they was going to assassinate him, he pulled his cloak back and held his neck out to him. And when the assassinator drove the sword to chop his head off, the power of God knocked him plumb back out from him and he crawled on his knees to ask him. Hallelujah! He was an angel. Hallelujah! To the church. Other things, watch how he, one of his brethren had been hung. He was on the road to try to find him, see what had taken place. And when he got there, he had done hung him. He was laying stretched out dead, and his eyes pushed out of his head. He went into him and fell down upon his knees and laid his body across him for an hour, praying to God. And the power of God come up on the man, and he raised up, took his hand, and walked away with him. Like that. That's history. Just like George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and a lot more. It's history. Yes, sir, St. Martin was the angel unto the Purgus Church, which is the marriage church that takes them over into Catholicism after that. The angel of the church of, um, of Thyatira was Columbia. The angel of the church of Sardis, the dead church, the word Sardis means dead. Come out with a name, not his name, but a name that you live, but you're dead. Watch how they brought out that baptism in that day. Okay. Come from it. The angel of the church of Sardis was Martin Luther, the first reformer. The angel of the church of Philadelphia was John Wesley, the messenger. And the angel of the church of, 
of Lady Osea is not known yet. It will be someday, but perhaps the owner, he that has an ear. So this is the age we're living in. God will do the judging of that. Now, notice now, and we'll get now to the scriptures back to the first church age. Now, I would like, I got some little things wrote down here that I wish you would listen closely. The first church, the Ephesian church, the works of the church, what God condemned them for was works without love. The reward was a tree of life. The church of Smyrna was a persecuted church, went through tribulations. Reward was crown of life. The third church Fergus, the age of false doctrine, Satan's line, the foundation of the papacy rule, marriage to church and state, the reward was hidden manna and a white stone. The church of Thyatira was the church of the papal subduing, the dark ages, reward was power and rule of nations and the morning star. That's the little minority that went through. The church of Sardis was the Reformation age, the great missionary, or not missionary, but the um, hidden names. They had their own names. And uh, the reward was white raiment, a name on the book of life, which has to come in the judgment. We had that the other day, the book of life, you are be judged from the book of life. The saints are translated and taken without that. They don't go to that. The Philadelphian church age, was the age of brotherly love, the Great Commission age and the Great Missionary age, the open door. And the uh, reward was uh, a pillar reveal the names of God was to be in doing, doing this age when it went out around 1906. All right. The Lady Ocean age was a lukewarm church, rich in Christian goods, having need of nothing, but was rich at poor, blind, and miserable, and naked. And the reward was to sit on the throne with the Lord, those who overcome that age. Now, to break down tonight, to show you a little bit about the service tonight, we're going to take the second chapter, the first church age. Now, we, he's revealed, and we know who he is. He's God. Now, the church age began, as I said, around 53 to 170. And A, the city of Ephesus, one of the three great cities of Asia, often called the third city of Christian faith. First was Jerusalem, second Antioch, and third Ephesus. C, a city of great commerce and trade. E, the government was Roman. F. The language was Greek. His stories believe John, Mary, Peter, Andrew, and Philip were all buried there. And Ephesus was known for its beauty. Christianity in Ephesus was where the Jews lived at Ephesus. And it was founded about A.D. 53 or 55. Christianity was planted there by St. Paul. Later, St. Paul spent three years at Ephesus. Paul's teaching bore great influence to the believers at Ephesus. Next, Timothy was the first bishop of the church at Ephesus. Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, in Paul's time, it was a great church. Ephesus means, the very name Ephesus means, let go, relax, backslidden. Called by God the backslidden church. God, God of knowledge, first, their works, their labor, and their patience. God rebuked their living, leaving their first love for backsliding and for no longer bearing life. Ephesus was not a deceived church. 
It failed itself by not continuing in perfect love. <laughs> Summary of Ephesus, fruits without love led to apostasy. The promises, paradise, promised to the overcomer of the saints of Ephesus in the church age, given to the tree of life. Here's a beautiful thing. The tree of life is mentioned three times in Genesis, three times in Revelation. The first time it was mentioned in, in Genesis was in Eden, and Christ was the tree. The three times it was mentioned in Revelations was Christ in paradise. Oh, that's rich. The Lord bless. Now we begin the first chapter of Ephesus. Or first of, um, verse of the second chapter of the Ephesian church. Unto the angel of the church at Ephesus write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. John is the, the messenger at that time walking in the midst of these seven golden candlesticks was Jesus Christ, the Almighty God. What is he doing? He didn't say he's walking in one candlestick. He is walking in the midst of all of them. What does that denote? That he is the same God. Yesterday, today, and forever, and in every church age. To every believer, he comes to, with the Holy Ghost to every age and to every person. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Holding in his right hand. Right hand means his authority and power. Holding in his right hand, under control, the seven messengers to the seven church ages. Oh, I like that. See him walking around through these church ages. The Christ making himself known to his people. Down through the dark ages, down through every age, while the church got formal and pulled out, and some went one way and some another. But that little minority of the church still held on in Christ, worked with them, confirming His Word. Why is it right through? It's so easy to see how that we've got what we have today when you begin to study this. Now, at the beginning, I believe all you see this high. Here's one church age, that's Pentecost. The second church age, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh church age. Now, if you'll notice this real close, the church began at Pentecost. How many believe that? Amen. Amen. You see what happened at Pentecost? Then we watch the church as it goes on down. It just starts fading out a little more, a little farther, a little farther, a little bit. Down like that, as the real true church goes out. Now, but Christ, no matter how small the church is, wherever two or three are assembled together in my name, I'll be in their midst. Amen. When they're assembled together in what? In the name of the Methodist, Amen. name of the Baptist, name of the Pentecostal, Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Wherever two or three are assembled together, no matter how little it is. And they're going to be so small in the last days till he said he'd have to come quickly and cut the sh word short or there'll be no flesh saved for the rapture. Yes. Amen. Wherever two or three are assembled in my name. Now, the first round of the apostles. Now we see this is the beginning, Pentecost. He's walking around. The same great God, the same great signs was to take place all down through these ages because he walked among each age. Blessing what? His people that the symbol is his name. Amen. I want you to watch in this as we go through the church. This church had Jesus' name. This church had Jesus' name. This church had Jesus' name, and this church lost it. This church come out the Lutheran age with the name that you live, but you're dead. And goes right 
on down unto the end of this age, and between this age and this age is an open door set that brings back that name again to the church. Amen. 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 The, between the, the ages. Now, tomorrow night, I'll try to have this set up here so we can all sit and I'll come down maybe tomorrow afternoon and draw up for, uh, some of the, pro, uh, the plans I want to speak to you about. If any of you's got the histories, bring them along or take your notes and go down to the library somewhere, get the history and read it and see if this is right. Now, the first verse, what's he doing? He's saluting them. On to Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, to John, write these things, saith he that holdeth seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. It's a salute. Now, the second verse and the third verse, he commands them. I know thy works and thy labors and thy patience, how that thou cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Amen. See, that apostasy had already begun to set in in this first age. Amen. Already started right there. Because the elect and true church who wanted to keep the precepts of the Bible and keep the words that Jesus said in his testimony... They'd already begin to pull away. Something would begin to happen. And there'd been false teachers rise up. People who were teaching wrong, contrary to the Scripture. Trying to bring in something or add something. That's the reason he gave this revelation to the church and said, Whoever takes away or adds to, you is partly taken out of the book of life. That's lost, brother. Amen. Just don't meddle with God's Word. Just No matter who it hurts or what it hurts. Just say it anyhow, just the way it's wrote there. That's the way. We don't need any great something else. We don't need any priest or anything to interpret it to us. God, the Holy Spirit, is the interpreter. Amen. He gives interpretation. Now, if you notice, turning from the evils and finding the false prophets, after that they were proven false, Having a form of godliness. See how the church began to get formal during that time. They began to kind of break down. The people under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost begin to cause people to kind of make fun of them. Well, didn't Jesus said, Blessed are you when you're persecuted for righteousness' sake? He never said to start getting formal. He said, Rejoice! And be exceedingly glad! For they persecuted the prophets which were before you. He said there's going to be attitudes in Matthew 5. Blessed are you! Why, to have people to make fun of you because you love the Lord Jesus is a blessing just to have to say it. They're only when they're cursing you, they're bringing God's blessings down on you. It backfires on you. <laughs> Like it did on Balaam that time. It, it backfires on them. When they try to make fun of you, being a Christian, why well, it backfires on them and God gives a blessing because blessed are you when man shall persecute you for my name's sake. For his name's sake. Blessed are you. Now, we find out that they want to start and get into a form of godliness. Now, I could stop right here and say something. Believe a will. Did you notice that every revival, now, minister brethren, you check this. Every revival produces twins. Just as Jacob and Rebecca produced twins. Esau and Jacob, I mean Isaac instead of uh, Isaac and Rebecca instead of Jacob. Isaac and Rebecca produced twins. The father was holy, the mother was holy, but they had two boys born, Esau and Jacob. Now, both of them was religious. But Esau, when it come to works and deeds as a good legalist, he was probably a better boy all the way around than Jacob was. Did you know that? Jacob was just a little boy that hung around his mammy all the time. But Esau got out and worked. Went out and got Vincent to give to his old blind daddy who was a prophet. He tried to take care of him. But Jacob only had one thing in mind. 
He wanted that birthright. He didn't care how long he had to hang around or whatever he had to do. The main thing in his life was the birthright. And Esau despised it. Now don't you see the natural man? The natural man, when a revival comes, there's two classes of people comes out of every revival. There's a natural man that goes and he'll come up the altar and say, Yes, sir, I accept Christ as my Savior. He'll go out and what does he happen? The first thing you know, you'll wind up in some good, cold, formal church. Because he thinks, well, if I join church, I'm just as good as the next man. Am I not just as good as so-and-so? What difference does it make as long as I belong to church and make my confession? There's a whole lot of difference. You've got to be born again. You've got to have the birthright. And Jacob didn't care how much he was laughed at. He wanted that birthright and he didn't care how he had to get it. Now, a lot of people don't want to get the birthright because they think that it's just a little unpopular. <laughs> they don't want to get out the altar and cry a little bit or go without a few meals and, and something. Else. They, they don't want to do it. Amen. A lot of the women, a lot of, you know, man, uh, makeup on, they think that if they cry, they might wash it off. <laughs> Had to put it on again. <laughs> well, there, it's, and I don't mean to say that's sacrilegious. I hope it don't sound that way, but that's the truth. Amen. They just don't want it. They don't want the new birth. Because a new birth is kind of messy. It's like any other birth. Any birth is a mess. I don't care where it's at. If it's in a pig pen or in the barn or if it's in a pink decorated hospital room, it's a mess. And so is a new birth a mess. Amen. Amen. It'll make you do things that you didn't think you'd do. Stand on a corner and beat a tambourine or sing glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, you'll act like a maniac. That's what it done to the apostles. That's what it done to the Virgin Mary. She acted like she was drunk. Yes, amen. She was a mess in society. Yes. But it takes a mess for life to come out of. Yes, amen. 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 Unless anything dies and rots, life can't come from it. Yes. Unless a man dies and rots in his own thoughts, yes. Christ can't get into his heart. Yes, when you're amen. trying to think for yourself now, if I walk up to the altar and say, Yes, Lord, I'm, I'm a fine fellow. I'll take it. I'll pay my tithes. I'll do this. You got to die and rot right there to your thoughts. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Just do whatever He wants to do with you. Get kind of messy with it. That sounds horrible, not sacrilegious, but it's the truth. It's the only way I know how to punch the thing out to make you understand it. What was more of a mess than that dignified bunch of Jews that day than to see these people come out there with stammer? Unless you know what a stammer is. Other tongues and acting like drunk people. <laughs> That's exactly what they were doing. They looked messy. And he said, Are these men all full of new wine? But after one kind of got to himself, he said, Let this be known to you and hearken to my words. These are not drunk like you suppose it is. But he went back to the scripture. This is that. That was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass that I say, says God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's the way the church was born first. How many believe that God is infinite? Then he could not change. If that was his idea of a church at the beginning, that's the kind of church you'll have at the end. <laughs> he cannot change. So how you go to substitute shaking a hand or sprinkling or, or some other thing that didn't happen right there. Each one of the apostles went right back to that. After they done all reasons, Holy Ghost that fell on Peter said, Can we forbid water? See, these has received the Holy Ghost like we did at the beginning. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul went over and found people shouting, having a big time, a bunch of Baptists, glorifying God. And he said, Acts 19, he said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, We don't want to be any Holy Ghost. He said, How was you baptized? He said, We've been baptized, but the same man baptized Jesus, John the Baptist. He said, That won't work anymore. Peter done sealed it on the day of Pentecost. He had the keys. See? He said, it won't work anymore. You've got to be baptized over again. So he baptized them over again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Laid his hands up on them. And they had the same kind of results that they had there at the beginning. The Holy Ghost fell on them. They began to speak in tongues and prophesy. 
Now, that's been the church down to the age. Now, it started right here at the beginning. I know your patience, your awful long suffering. I know, now remember, I am he that walks in amongst the candlesticks. I know your patience and your work and your labor and your love and so forth. I know all that you've done. And uh, uh, I know that you've tried these people who call themselves prophets, apostles, and found that they are liars. Oh, that's pretty flat, isn't it? I'm not responsible for that. He is. He said they were liars. But the Bible said, try a man. If there be any among you who is spiritual or prophet, says he is, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him. I'll speak to him in visions and in dreams. And if what he says comes to pass, then hear him. Don't be afraid of him. See? Because that I'm with him. But if it doesn't come to pass, then don't hear him. He hasn't got my word. See? It's his word that happens. Now, they found out these fellows wasn't carrying on according to the Bible. See, they were trying to get something else. I want you to keep your thinking cap on now before we get down to the nugget just in a few minutes. Now, they said, I see what you, if you have long suffering and patience with them. You tried them and found out they're not apostles. They're not. Now, as I said to begin, before we start off on this again, every revival produces a pair of twins. One is a spiritual man, the other is a natural man of the earth. I joined the church. I'm just as good as anybody. And that's what this revival produced. That's what every revival, that's what Luther's produced. That's what Arenas has produced. That's what St. Martin's produced. That's what Columbia's produced. That's what Wesley's produced. And that's what Pentecost produced. Yes, just amen. exactly. You see how they've gone to see, built their churches, went on off in big fine places. My goodness. Stand up and repeat the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Roman Catholic Church and the communion of saints. Anybody who believes the communion of saints is a spiritualist. Amen. Anything communion of the dead is of the devil. Amen. That's exactly right. We have one mediator between God and man. That's the man Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. That's what Peter said. And you, dear Catholic people, call him the first pope. And Peter, being the first pope who walked with Jesus, and then he said there's no other mediator between God and man, and these you've got 10,000 others today. Why does it change so much if the church is infallible? It doesn't change. And all your masses are said in Latin. So it won't change. What happened? Where did you ever find the Apostles' Creed in the Bible? If the Apostles had any creed, was repent and be baptized, everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Or the mission of the No other creed I ever heard of, no one ever recited anything. But when it comes to the Holy Roman Church and all these other things, and God the Father Almighty, the preserver of heavens and earth, that's nonsense. Yeah, it ain't in the Bible. There's no such thing as that right. in the Scripture. Amen. It's a made-up creed that they made up, but it's all the prayers and everything's a made-up thing. We see today that our Protestants, when we get down in here, just went right off of them. And just like Billy Graham said Sunday, the people have been in wrong so much that they think they're all right while they're wrong. Yeah, that's right. It's the truth. I'm glad that I'm... Of course, I know Billy Graham received the Holy Ghost or George Jeffries over there, but... Some of these days he'll come out of that. <laughs> God's using him right there now because he can shake that kingdom that nobody else called it could get into. But you can see he's preaching this. He's something behind that because some of these years shake a hand Baptist. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, I know thy works and thy patience, how that thou cannot... Uh, let's see now. I, got the, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, Thou that cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say that they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. You found them to be liars. How'd they know that? They wasn't quoting with the word. Now, if a man says that this Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever, and a man says, Oh, the days of miracles is past, then that man's a liar. Amen. If the Bible said, Repent and be baptized, everyone, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and every place in the Bible says the same thing, and everybody that was ever baptized in the, in the Bible time was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and He commissions them to be baptized, sprinkled, or something else like that, that man is a liar. Amen. Found out a false prophet. Amen. I hope I ain't hurting feelings, but, uh, brother, you, you can't baby this. It's time to take the gloves off and handle it. Amen. 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 Amen.
something different. Show me where one person ever baptized any other way than in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Outside of the Catholic Church. So if you're baptized that way, you're not in the Christian Church. You're in the Catholic Church. Or you're baptized. Their own Sunday visit to their catechism said, the question, will any Protestants be saved? Said many of them because they have our baptism and anything like that. So they claim about the Bible, and the Bible said, baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. And we take it from there and put it, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and they knock down to it. Right. Certainly not. Not a, not, it's, not a, it's not a Christian baptism. It's a Catholic baptism. Do you hear me overnight? Have you ever been baptized in Christian baptism? Christian baptism. Christ. Jesus Christ. Not some title. Now, the third verse now. All right, second and third verse. Now, the third verse. And is born and had patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. For my name. Did you notice they had patience, labored, for what? His name. See that name holding in that church? Now watch it when we get down through the week how that fades out and goes into another name. See? Has had patience, labored, and so forth, and for my name's sake. He, they labored for his name. To keep the name of Jesus Christ above any church, above anything else, let it be first. In, whatever the Bible said, whatever you do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Is that right? Whatever you do in word or in deed. If you marry, marry a person. If you can't, if they're all scrupled up in their marriage, don't marry them at all. Amen. Amen. If you can't freely say, uh, I pronounce you husband and wife in the name of Jesus Christ, let them go. All right. If you want to baptize them, baptize them in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have to do something that you can't do in Jesus' name, let it alone. Amen. Somebody said, take a little drink. If you can't do that in Jesus' name, so let it alone. Amen. Somebody said, play a little card. You can't do that in Jesus' name, so let it alone. Amen. A little dirty, smutty joke at your bridge party. You can't tell that in Jesus' name, so let it alone. Amen. See? You can't wear shorts in Jesus' name, so let it alone. I could go on, but we, you know what I'm talking about. All right. You can't do that. What you can't do in His name, leave it alone, because He said, whatever you do in word and deed, do it all. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Now, now we're going to... That's the, He commanded them for that. Now, I'm going to talk about the complaint now in the fourth chapter. The fourth verse, rather. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Oh, I have something against you. You've been patient. You've held up for my name. Wouldn't that be just a good thing of this tabernacle today? <laughs> yes, sir. You've been all right. You've had a lot of patience and bore a long time. But the thing of it is, You've held up for my name. I appreciate all that. I, I command you for that. It's all right. Now I see that you tried them who say they're apostles and so forth and found they're liars. They don't cope with the word. I, I appreciate all that. But there's something I got against you. And that is that you've left your first love. Amen. You left that love that you once had for them good old-fashioned Holy Ghost meetings. And you're beginning to kind of slide backwards into that farm will come in with Ah, oh, Father. Nonsense. See? All oh, this year's society, and someone has to come out with a big robe on them, you know, to sing uh, in the choir, you know, and the manicured all over their hair and everything, and a lot of makeup around their face. They sing like I don't know what. You're not wrong, but if that had been the old Roberts meeting, I sure would have called a bunch out. As a, as, at the businessman's convention, and it's helped. We didn't have that night to go to speak. They couldn't hold it over there in the hotel. They took me to the old Roberts building. And when I was sitting in the oral study, there was a bunch of Pentecostal children, all of them young men, women, 16, 17 years old, 18, all standing out there, about 30 or 40 of them, go to sing some kind of a, a little sound to me like some kind of an overture by some like Becky talks about, Krachowski or some of them kind of things like that. I don't know, some of them kind of a song classical song, and here there was, the brethren was going to take up an offering, 
out in the meeting, and each one of these went along and had them a little cup, act like they were blind, and all the jokes and carrying on you ever hear between them boys and girls, and talking like everything, and them girls with enough paint on could have painted oral building almost, and there they was like that, and calling themselves Pentecostal. They lost their first love. I sure go with David Duplitz's. God has no grandchildren. Amen. No, sir. We got Methodist grandchildren. We got Baptist grandchildren. We got Pentecostal grandchildren, but God don't have any. Amen. You're sons and daughters. Amen. You can't come in on your mammy or your daddy because they were good men and women. You've got to pay the same price they did. Amen. You got to be born just like they was. God don't have no grandchildren at all. You're a son or daughter, or you're not a grandson. That's one thing, sure. Have your way, Jesus. Went to a meeting there, and they, they to a fine Pentecostal assembly church. Boy, you ought to see them women scatter when they see me coming in. It's that short, bobbed hair, and that little old half dressed like a wiener, all emotional, skin down those dresses like that. Pentecostal women dressed so sexy. You're going to have to answer for it today at judgment. Amen. You're going to be guilty of committing adultery. Amen. Jesus said, Who should ever look up on a woman and lust after has committed adultery with her already in his heart? Amen. If you present yourself to a man like that, who's guilty? You're the man. Amen. Be right. Amen. Shun the very appearance of evil. Well, there you are. What you lost their first love. Oh, you couldn't get them on a corner with a tambourine to pat their hands and praise God. Oh, no, they'd sing some kind of a classical something with a bunch of robes around them. See? They lost their first love. Amen. That's what's married the first church. See? They just have to act like the world. They have to dress like the world, look like the world, act like the world, and have their favorite television star, you know, they just can't keep from seeing it. We love Susie or something, you know, you know. They just have to see it. They'll stay home from prayer meeting and everything else to see it. If they don't, they give their pastor a good ball and out, let them out in time until that program comes on so they can get home to see it. Yeah. The love of the world more than the love of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, too far. Well, he can't say amen no more. My goodness, it breaks some of the makeup. See? They don't have it no more. That's Pentecost. That ain't bad. This day never had it to begin with. <laughs> but amen. 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 We're talking about Pentecost. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. I know it's awful sickening, brother, but we want a birth out of this thing. Amen. Amen. You got to bring death before you have birth. Amen. It's the truth. But there you are. Left your first love. I, if God had that against this church, mm. He's got it against that one too. Amen. Amen. Because you left your first love, I've got it against you. I have something against you. That's my complaint. You once had a great time, but you begin to let the world begin to creep in. And you got to act a little formal. You're still holding my name, and you're still doing a things that's right and you got a lot of patience and so forth and you labor you're like a mule you just labor and work uh, my 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 see you've left grace and faith and power to swap it for labor and works well I tell you brother Branham I, I help every widow woman I can well that's a good thing I command you for that but where's that first love you once had where's that joy you used to have as David once cried, Oh, Lord, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Where is them all-night prayer meetings and tears on your cheeks? My goodness. The Bible's even dusting got cobwebs on it. You read old love stories and news things and things that ought to be allowed to be published and put out for a trash can. And we Pentecostal people pick them up and just loth over them like a bunch of flies on a garbage can. That's right. Oh, mercy. What we need is back to our first love. Back to any cause. No. I better get away from there. All right. But you understand, leaving that first love, the fourth verse, fifth verse now. A warning. The fifth verse, a warning. Remember and repent. See? Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Where did you come from? From Pentecost you fell down to where you are now. Backsliding. And repent and do thy first works. Go back to Pentecost again. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove the candlestick out of H-I-S. See who it is, don't you? His place except thou repent. 
In other words, if you've got a God-filled pastor filled with the Holy Ghost and you try to hold him under your fingers, say, well, if he says anything about us having a robe choir, if he says anything about us wearing makeup, we'll just excommunicate him. Don't you worry. God will do it before you get a chance to. Amen. He'll go out and preach to stones on the street before you compromise with that kind of stuff. Amen. you got a pastor that really tells you the truth. You ought to honor God and save the Spirit and worship God, realizing that you're going to be lost if you don't. See? But people live today like this. This is the only thing there was. Live here on earth. That's all. You don't realize you've got a soul that's going to leave here and go somewhere. And you seal your destination right here. The way you live and the way you do. Out holding grudges and mean and everything and then run to church. Oh, mercy. Shame on you. You bring a reproach up, upon the cause of Christ. Isn't that right? Don't we do it? The bootleggers ain't hurting the church. Isn't that? It is the prostitutes hurting the church. It's the people who profess to be Christians that hurt the church. We know what the bootlegger is or what the prostitute is. When our sisters dress like a prostitute, that's different. That's what hurts the church. Amen. When the man drinks like the bootlegger, well then, that's what hurts the church. It professes to be a Christian. And they do that. The people look for you name. Let him that even names the name of Jesus Christ depart. Amen. 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 Get away from it. Oh, we're so short, brethren. Me, you, all of us. Yeah, we're yeah, we're yeah. short of what Christ wants us to be. Right Amen. here in this day, it's time to lay aside every sin that's easy to beset us and run with patience the race that's set before us. Yeah, Preachers, yeah. that's right, brethren. Yeah. That's exactly right. Remember and repent. Or I will remove the light of the star out of his place. What's his place? In the church. But if you don't repent and go back to where you was in the first place, I'll take your pastor right away from him, move him out of his place. I'll put him somewhere else where, he's, where I'll reflect my light that'll shine. Amen. Mm-hmm. Isn't that solemn? Absolutely. It's time for the churches to repent. It's time for Pentecost to get a lot of these little polished scholars out of the pulpits and get the old-fashioned preacher in there that'll tell you the truth. Not pat around and use a church for a meal ticket. Big wages and something like that and psychology and a few horse races and uh, uh, soup suppers and everything else. It's time to get back to the gospel. I don't care how little you are. We're two or three are together. I'll be in their midst. Repent lest I come and remove the candlestick. Send him away. Else is shine his light. Now, the sixth verse. Now, here's the one we're going to have trouble with. Now, except you repent, you come and move the pastor away. But this thou hast. Now, remember. Oh, don't miss this. Now, this is going to lock the rest of it together. Come on down to this age we're in now. <coughs> Everybody feeling good first? <laughs> Are you in a hurry? No. no. All, right, now, all right, bear just a little bit then. Amen. Now, thank you. <laughs> but this thou hast. They had something then, didn't they? Now, what did they have? That thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. You hate those deeds of the Nicolaitan. Sitting in the study today up there, I wrote something here on that. I want you to listen closely now. It's in a couple pages here. The sixth verse praises and agreed. That God and the church agreed upon one thing. That they hated the deeds of the Nicolaitan. The true vine... The true vine, the true church that was in this Ephesian church. Now remember, each church has its formals and each church has its spirituals. That's the twins. It's born in every revival and lives in every church. This started right in this age and ends up in this age. And finally, the formals took it over in the Thyatira age and Luther pulled it back out again and now it's swinging right back in again. Can you see that formal religion? There's no difference between that and Catholicism. It's all the same thing. Every organization's butchered right into it. God never did organize these church. That's exactly what they're trying to do here. And you watch and see now if that isn't right. 
just show you how cursed an organization is. It was, it was foreign to the new church, the New Testament church. See? But thou, but this thou hast, uh, thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. The true vine hated the formal deeds of the Nicolaitans. So did God. What was deeds in the Ephesian church, in the church of Ephesians, became a doctrine in the Pergus church. In uh, Ephesus, the first church, it was a deed. In the next church, it became a doctrine. Can you hear it? Can you understand it now? Yeah. It was a deed in Ephesus. And watch over here in Pergus. It became a doctrine. It just started here in a little baby form. In a minute, we're going to find out what that was. Here is Paul's wolves. These are the Nicolaitans. Now, what, let's break that word down, find out what we got before we go any farther. The word Nicolaitan is kind of a foreign thing to me. I've got every Greek election that I could find. Nicolaitan comes from the word of Nick, N I C K O. Wait, I believe I wrote it down here. N I C K O, Nico, which means to conquer or to overthrow. Nicolaitan overthrow or conquer the laity. What they were trying to do here was trying to take the church where God had pastors and the Spirit of God moving by gifts in the church of the living God and they were having a doctrine start that they were going to have some priests and bishops and popes and so forth. That God said He hated. Amen. He hates it yet today. Amen. Nick Oladian, Nick O, overcome or overthrow the laity. The laity is the church. How many know the laity is the church? All right. Overthrow or conquer or take place of the laity. In other words, take all of the sacredness, all of the power from the church. And put it over on the uh, priest. Let the congregation live the way it wants to. But the priest is the holy one. Taking a holy ghost away from the people with signs and wonders following them. And take that away and give them a holy priesthood. Taking away the holy ghost and swapping it for a priesthood. You see what it was? It was a, it finally became, in this church here, it was a deed, and this place had become a doctrine, and fire a tower, it took over. Yeah. And when Luther came out, it couldn't stay that way. It went right back and took over again. Yeah. Bishops, cardinals, archbishops. Who in the world to have God's church but Him Himself? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now I feel religious. <laughs> the Holy Ghost was sent to rule the church. Amen. Not just the preacher, the whole congregation. Amen. Yes, the preacher be holy. It's all the church has the Holy Ghost. And instead of that, instead of having the Spirit to make it, they take a little wafer and a cracker and a, some wine and call it the Holy Eucharist, which means Holy Spirit. How in the world can a cracker and a piece of wine be a spirit? Now, if that's why you'd have to read Acts 2 like this. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, there came a Roman priest up the road and he said, Lick out your tongue. And he laid the wafer on and he drank the wine. So now he got the Holy Ghost. Now, now we think that's a uh, terrible. It is. Now, let's go down. I was ordained the Baptist church. Let's take us Baptist. <laughs> but Methodist. What do we do? If thou wilt confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you're saved. The devil believes he's the Son of God. Trimble that. Probably believes it more than a lot of church members do. The devil believes the same thing and trembles. Because he knows his doom. Now we take up the Methodist farm. They, they say that John did not baptize, that he sprinkled. 
said there's a lot of gophers in the country and, and the water come up in the places and he had a muscle shell and scraped out a gopher hole and they actually preached that. And it's got some water in this gopher shell or this muscle shell out of the gopher hole and sprinkle the people. Nonsense! Amen. Oh, brother! Well, here we take it. On the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place in one accord. And the pastor came down and preached a fine sermon and said, Give me the right hand of fellowship and we put your name on the book. Oh, that don't sound right, does it? No. You might get that. You couldn't get that in an almanac. They know better than that. Yeah. The old lady's birthday almanac more correct than that would be. <laughs> well, what caused that then? The Nicolaitan. Bring in a bunch of men to twist up the scripture and make a denomination. You can't let God move in it. Amen. Dies right there. Hallelujah. Uh, so you said, here you're dead. You got a name, you're living, but you're dead. Yeah. Many of them dead and don't know it. Right. Amen. Me and my brother fishing with his little boys up here, and I caught an old snapping turtle and I cut his head off. Get him off the line. I didn't want to fool with that thing and put him up on the bank there. And my little brother come along and he said, Why'd you catch a while ago? I said, A turtle. He said, what you do with him? I said, there, ladies, there. Uh, his head's laying up there, and he went up there, and he said, is he dead? I said, sure. Separate his head from his body. He must be dead. So then he picked up a stick and started to reach down and throw his turtle head back in the river, or in the creek, and when he did, the old turtle grabbed it. You know, they old snap for a hour or two. He jumped back and said, hey, I thought you said it was dead. I said, he is. He said, well, he don't know it. <laughs> So that's the way a lot of people are. Dead and don't know it. Yeah. Nicolaitans. Oh, my. Oh, he said, you hate that. Taking all the full time holy priests, holy cardinal, holy bishop, and some of you Pentecostals, the great overseer. Let him come down, the general overseer. He'll tell you whether you have a healing service here or not. <laughs> The Holy Ghost is the one to say that or not. God is the word. Well, Brother Ben, we believe that the Bible does teach baptizing in Jesus' name, but the general overseer said if we started that in our church, he'd kick us all out. Go ahead. Right. I'd rather be kicked out here and kicked out there. So if you take anything out of here, you're going to get kicked out there anyhow, so you might as well get kicked out here. If you kicked you out here, you'd be kicked in there, so it's just the same thing. Stay right with us. We want to be right. Oh, my, it's a serious thing, brother. We've got to get this thing right. We'll never be able to have a church until God gets a foundation to lay it on. He'll never build his church up on a bunch of nonsense. He has to come on his word or he won't come at all. Right on his word. Somebody not long ago up there said, Brother Branham, come out to the Chautauqua. How many is at the Chautauqua? Well, just look at here. A third of the church or more was at Chautauqua. Which, now, that man got up there that afternoon, and you all heard him, not knowing that I'd know about it. God can reveal in the room up there what they're saying down there, and you know he did do it. Come up there and say, Now, Brother Branham, oh, he's a servant of the Lord. When the Spirit is upon him, he's anointed prophet. He sure knows God tells him what it is and what's going to be. But it's theology. Don't listen to that. <laughs> what a scrupled up idea. Hallelujah. How a man can say that. Well, I haven't... Well, uh, if you didn't know uh, split beans and coffee, you'd, you'd know better than that. <laughs> How can you ever think of such a thing? Why? Well, the very word prophet itself means a divine revelator of the word. Yeah. How can you... The word of the Lord came to the prophet. I never said I was one. They said it. But there you are. See, how man, to hold up a little church doctrine somewhere because their organization wouldn't agree with it. Yeah. Selling your birthrights for a mess of pottage, Esau, yeah. you miserable hypocrite. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But selling your birthrights for a mess of pottage, for a mess of denomination, a mess of organization that yeah. God hates. Yeah. Just remember you say organization, God hates it. Yes. It's a thing that separated brothers and broke down. Yes. There's a many a Methodist, Baptist, and Presbyterian tonight would like to have a fellowship around the table of God. Yes. But if they do, they get kicked right out the first time they start into yes. it. Right. Exactly right. Mama belonged to it, and they're just a grandchild to begin with. Right. <laughs> I don't care what mama belonged to. 
Mama lived in all the life she had in her day. You were living in another day. Amen. Science once proved about 300 years ago, but spinning the ball around the globe, said if a, any vehicle would ever move the terrific speed of 30 miles an hour, gravitation lifted from the earth and take it out in space. You think science today believes that? They're running 1,900 miles per hour. They're not looking back to see what they said. They're looking back to see what they can see, looking forward. But the church always wants to look back to see what Wesley said, what Moody said, what Sankey said. All things are possible to them that believe. Let's look ahead. The only thing in the Bible, look backwards. Do you know what kind of an animal always looks back? The lowest life there is. How many knows what the lowest life there is that moves? A frog. A frog is the lowest life there is, and a man is the highest life there is. And a frog looks backwards. I don't like that old old life. <laughs> I want to look forward. Yeah. Believing, trusting, walking in the light as he is in the light. Yeah. Amen. Amen. As he shines the light. One time down in Kentucky, I was having a meeting. An old fellow come out and said, Oh, I don't believe that healing. And I said, Well, it's all right. You're American. He said, I, I don't believe anything unless I see it. And I said, Well, it's all right. He said, no, I ain't got nothing against you, but I, uh, I don't believe what you're saying. I said, it's your own American privilege. You don't have to. He said, I never accept nothing unless I can see it plainly. Hmm? I said, well, that, that's, that's good. You must be from Missouri. He said, oh, I'm Kentucky. <laughs> don't sound very good for Kentucky. I said, but anyhow, I said, if you, that's the way you think, you go ahead. And he said, uh, he said uh, I said, how are you going home? He said, I'm going across the hill. I live, we'll go over with it. Nice man. He said, go home and stay all right, Brother Bram. I said, I wish you could, Brother. I said, I'm going up here with my uncle. And he said, uh, I said, you want to ride over? He said, no, i got to go across the hill up there, up this way, and down a holler, and up, you know how it is down there. And I said, well, I said, um, how are you going to get there? He said, I'm going up the path there. Well, I said, you can't even see your hand before. <laughs> I said, how are you going to get up there? I said, i got a lantern. And I said, well, uh, how do you, what do you do, light that lantern and walk with it? He said, yes, sir. I said, when you light that lantern, can you hold up like a kiss? I'd like to see your house. He said, you can't see it. I said, then how are you going to get there? <laughs> oh, he said, I just light the lantern. As I walk, it, uh, I just walk as the light. I said, that's just it. <laughs> just walk in the light. <laughs> just keep walking. Don't stand still. You never get nowhere. If you've been saved, walk to sanctification. You say, how do you get there? Just keep walking. Amen. Is the baptism of the Holy Ghost after sanctification? How do you get there? Just keep walking in the light. Amen. If signs, wonders, and miracles, just keep walking in the light. Amen. Just keep on. Every time you make a step, the light will jump just a little ahead of you because he's always ahead of you. Amen. He don't push. He leads. <laughs> he is the light. Amen. Oh, I'm so glad of that, aren't you? Yeah. He is the light in him. There's no darkness. Thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Become a doctrine. Now, let's see what Paul... Now, whose church... Who founded this church now? Paul. Ephesus. Let's turn back now to Acts, the 20th chapter. Just a minute. And Acts, the 20th chapter, and see what Paul... Do you believe Paul was a prophet? Sure he was. Certainly he was. Remember that night, the vision on the stormy sea and so forth? Now, and all about it. Now, the 20th chapter of Saint of um, Ex, uh, Acts, and let's begin now about the, uh, the 27th verse. Listen close now as we read. Now, this is Paul, a prophet, foretelling what would come to pass. For I have not shunned to declare unto you the whole counsel of God, that blessed man. Oh, I want to stand there that day and watch that martyr's crown put on his head. If there's such a thing as I can weep, then I'll weep, I'll shout to see Paul. See St. Paul, that great apostle, with his robe made bright and fair. And I'm sure there will be some shouting when we all get there, aren't you? Amen. Now, I'm not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Is that right? Amen. Now, Christians, look this way. I'm going to ask you something. Who was it that commanded the people that had been baptized another way besides the name of Jesus Christ to come and be baptized over again? He preached the whole council. Is that right? Oh. And what did Paul say? And... Um, 
I believe it was uh, the, uh, I'm not sure now what Thessalonians, the first chapter in the eighth verse. If we are an angel from heaven, would preach any other gospel. If an angel come down from heaven and preach any other gospel in this, than commanding man to be baptized again in the name of Jesus Christ, in the gospel that Paul preached, if any angel from heaven, not let alone a bishop or a cardinal or a general overseer or a pastor or, or something, if an angel come down from heaven and preach another gospel besides this, let him be cursed. That's right. Is that right? What he said. That's Galatians 1.8. I just happen to think of it. All right. Galatians 1.8. If you want to put that down, see what Paul says. Now, here he says, now, the 27th, I believe the 27th verse, For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Now, listen, what this, this is a prophecy. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost made you overseers, to flee the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Who purchased? Whose blood was that? The Bible said it was God's blood. God with His own blood. Is that right? See the church of God, which He has purchased with His own blood. The Bible said we are saved by the blood of God. Did you know that? Surely does. All right. We purchased with His own blood. For I know this, that after my departing, Shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, also of your own selves. Watch that man to look down through that and see that thing coming. Of your own selves shall man rise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Years later, are a bunch of men that want to make an organization and take the the sacredness and the Holy Spirit away from the church and put it on bishops and popes and priests. To, they'll be holy and the congregation live anywhere the way they want to and they'll pay the priest and he'll pray them out of hell and everything like that. It's a Nicolaitan. God said, I hate that. Yes, amen. Now listen, let me see. You say God said he hated it. Now let's see if he did. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. God hates an organization. Is that right? Now you see exactly what they were going to do, and you see what they did do. I watch down through the church if they don't do that. He hates an organization. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says into the churches. Now, Paul's wolves had become Nicolaitans. They were trying to form a priesthood like the Levitical priesthood, which was foreign to the New Testament doctrine. Amen. The word nickel, the Greek word nickel means to conquer, overcome. Overcome what? The laity, the Holy Spirit. Take out of the church the resurrected Lord Jesus with signs and wonders among the believers and put man voted in to be a pope or a carnal, cardinal or an overseer trying to take the Holy Ghost away from the laity and give it to an order called the Holy Order of Man, placing them over the laity. Not to call them pastors, which means shepherds, but fathers. Which Jesus said, don't you call no man father on this earth. See that evil thing? And what did we do? Or oh, if we could stop, wish we didn't have all these nice bundled up like this. I like to take tomorrow night on the 12th chapter of Revelation and show you that old prostitute woman sitting up there, a whore. And she, reason she was because she had committed fornications with God and called herself a widow. 
and also she was a mother of harlots. Yes, Is that right? Amen. Now we know that was wrong because she's sitting on seven hills and everything just exactly a man in her and there's the number of the beast and so forth. We all know that in previous teachings who it was. But the sad thing of it, she was a mother of harlots. This is the beginning of it right here. Yes. Begin in Rome as a bunch of Christians, so-called Christians. Listen, God help me make it real. A bunch of Christians in a church like this. They got farm and indifferent and pulled off and set themselves up an organization. And then united that in the dark age with the state. And state and church became one what? Christian church. Holy Catholic Church. It was called the word Catholic is the word of means universal. The great universal Christian church. And all the people that spoke in tongues and shouted and healed the sick and so forth, heretics. And finally made it so constrained until anybody was caught worshiping that way was thrown into the lion's den if they wouldn't embrace Catholicism. That went for all these hundreds of years back there of that persecution. But that church never died. Right, you can't Hallelujah. kill it. Amen. God said it would live to the end and he'd give it a crown of life. Amen. Come down to those ages of persecution. Then along come Martin Luther to continue the age and he swung the church out under justification. What happened when Luther died? They organized it, made it a Luther church. They got a doctrine. When they organized it, what did they do? Give it a birth right back into Romanism again. That's the right. Then the Holy Ghost moved out of that, and Wesley saw it. And Wesley and Whitfield and George Whitfield and many of those others, and, and Asbury and many of them were great revivalists. They saved the world in that day. They had a revival at Philadelphia ages, saved England, the United States too. They had meetings where they kicked out and called holy rollers. You Methodists was done that. They fall in the floor under the power of God and they throw water in your face and fan them. That's right. Yeah. And they jerked so hard on her until they got they said they had the jerks. Yeah. The people would jerk and shake her in the power of the Holy Ghost. Out of your way, Jesus. That's Amen. Methodist history. Yeah. 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 Right. From there come the Quakers. And so forth that now they organized it. They made this Methodist, primitive Methodist, and this kind of Methodist, and that kind of a Methodist, until it's got so low down, until the Methodist people wants to take the blood out of their songbooks. Yeah. Here the other night on a television program, my mother called me. They had a Methodist pastor right here in Indiana teaching rock and roll in the church. That's a shame that we have failed to see this beautiful art that goes into the church. That's the devil and a false prophet. hurt your feelings, but brother, that's the God's truth. Yeah. Oh, brother, anger you a little bit this way, make you study the scripture, maybe get right with God and to be lost yeah. at the end. Yeah. You might not like me now, but someday you'll put your arm around me and say, brother, Brown, that's true. Yeah. 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 Right here, they're going into that. That's where they, it's just there. The Bible said they would do that. Then from Wesley, if Wesley did that, then along come the Pentecostals. And they got the restoration of the gifts. Started speaking with tongues. The Holy Ghost baptism. It's like a grain of corn comes up out of the ground. The first thing it rots. Brings forth a couple of blades. Then it, you've got a field of corn, you think. That blade grows up and makes a tassel. This first was Lutheran. The tassel, what was it? Methodist. The pollen. The brother of love. The evangelizer. The pollen going out into others. Why, even nature claims these church ages. Amen. Methodist coming out of chaos. I mean, Lutheran coming out of chaos. Methodist shaking off its brotherly love and evangelistic day and, uh, and the day of uh, a missionary. The greatest missionary day the world's ever known was Methodist time. That's right. Shaking off its pollen. What happened out of that, out of that pollen? Come a year of corn, Pentecostals. A grain, just like the same thing went in. Not a leaf, not a tassel, but a green. And now the... The Pentecostals has got fungus all over that grain so that you can't even see the grain hardly. It's time to clean it off. Amen. 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 
What did they do? Did the same thing the Methodists did. One organized them a bunch of people. We're the assemblies of God. The other one, we're the Pentecostal holiness. Another one, we're the oneness. We're the two-ness. And there's so many, there's so many. My riding one hump, back camel two hump, three humps, everything. All oh, the 60 or 30 or 40 different organizations of them. What did they do? Throw it right back into Romanism again. Yes. Baptizing the baptism of the Roman Catholic Church. Yes. I ask any Pentecostal to show me where anybody in the Bible is baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Yeah, well, I ask any bishop, cardinal, any teacher to show me where it's ever, ever done outside of the Catholic Church. Yeah. And Luther brought it with him. He brought catechism and everything else out of it. Right. Yeah. Methodists continue with it. Pentecostals, you ought to be ashamed. Amen. Clean up. Amen. Come back to the Word. Amen. Repent. Amen. Or God will take the candlestick away from you. Amen. Amen. The life that you have gone. Amen. All right. Take the Holy Ghost out as a leader and give them a holy order of man and place them over the laity. And don't call them pastors, shepherds. We're supposed to be called pastors, shepherds, the word pastor means. But father, cardinal, archbishop, or general overseer. The true ones hated this thing. Right. And God endorsed it for them and said, I hate it too. Amen. Because he's supposed to be the general overseer, the archbishop, Amen. the pope. Amen. <laughs> he works with each individual. Not an organization, but a person. Amen. Now, strangely listen as we're coming to the close. We just got one more verse. Here we have the dogma of Catholicism's beginning, apostolic succession. How many know that? Apostolic. Now, the Catholic says that the Pope today is the successor of Peter. Pop, apostolic succession. There's no such a thing. How's your carnal sexual desire. How was it that Esau and Jacob was both born of a holy father and a holy mother and one of them a Christian and a devil? Amen. How can it be? Because sin is sin and sex is sex, but God gives the birth. Amen. Amen. God chooses us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Did you know that? Amen. Wait till we get to reading these historians and watch how uh, Irenaeus, how it gives God praise for choosing before the foundation of the world. How that St. Martin and all of those giving him praise, God praised that because, and people speaking of him saying he was chosen before the foundation of the world. That's scripture. Those brothers are lined up with God. But this old black church comes through them 1,500 years of dark ages, smutted the whole thing like a lamp sm yeah. smoking, blinded the lights. But it shall be light in the evening time, the Lord said. Amen. Apostolic uh, succession. One after the other. One pope and has been a lineage of popes before you can be a pope. <laughs> oh, my, my. That's nonsense. Amen. <laughs> the, the laity, not the holy and just, but the, let, the, let the priest pray for them and bring them out of their sins. Forgiving their sins. Paying money for a confession. Protestants do the same. They try to be, pat their pastor on the back and live as the rest of the world. And he know more about God than he does. Let them stay in his church and call them members of his church and letting them stay in there and professing to them if they are saved, how they'll be disappointed on that day if they're not born again. Amen. Amen. Have your way, Jesus. Without the Holy Ghost, you're lost. Amen. Amen. No man can say Jesus is the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. Amen. The true church at Ephesus was not deceived by this polished intellectual speeches. They hated it. They wasn't deceived. They know the true church wasn't. False revelation. As these fellows had called Nicolaitans, 
which did not cooperate with the Word of God. Amen. Tell me where you ever see priest and confession taught in the Bible here. Where do you ever see sprinkling taught in the Bible here for remission of sins? Where do you ever see anybody baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost for the remission of your sins? Where did you ever see giving the right hand of fellowship and putting their name on the church book in there? Where do you ever see all this stuff at? What is it? If a priesthood or a, a clergy that's not right with the Word. Amen. And they're Nicolaitans and God said, I hate them. Amen. Get back to the Word. Oh, that's, oh, that's strong, brother, but I, I, I'm not responsible. Bless it, Him. <laughs> False revelation. Amen. Not with the Word, but call them liars. False apostles, false prophets. But the true church held on to the original teaching of St. Paul and the baptism of the Holy Ghost with signs following and confirming the word that Paul taught. Amen. Amen. Show me where God will ever confirm the word of sprinkling. Show me where God will ever confirm and bring speaking in tongues and great things as the shaking hands of the pastor somewhere and put your name on the book and still chewing, smoking, drinking, telling lies, um, card parties, having a little fun going. Oh, mercy. That's carnal false prophets, friends. Yes, sir. The way of God is holiness. Let this be known to every member here of the body of Christ. Until you live a holy life, God refuses your sacrifice. The sacrifice must be offered with holy hands. That is our right. The high priest, before he could even come in to offer the sacrifice, he had to be holy and dedicated and anointed and perfumed and everything before he could even walk in the presence of God to offer the sacrifice. Is that right? Amen. Then how can you go out here and cheat and steal and fuss and fight with your neighbors and everything else and carry on the way you do and then come in and say, Oh, Lord God, praise Jesus, hallelujah. People say, I see them speaking tongues. That still don't mean they got the Holy Ghost. Right, amen. I hear them shout. That still don't mean they got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a lie. Right. Yes, amen. The Bible said the rain cometh upon the earth all to prepare it, to dress it, for which is prepared for. <laughs> Hebrews 6. But thorns and thistles, which is nigh unto rejection, whose end is to be burned. The sun shines on the just and the unjust. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. The rain comes to make the wheat crop, we'll call it. And every weed that's in the field, if the wheat's thirsty, then the weed's thirsty. And the same rain that waters the wheat waters the, waters the weeds also. The little old weed will raise its head up and holler, Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm so glad to get this rain. The little old weed will holler, Glory to God! Praise God! Hallelujah! I'm glad to get it. But by their fruit, yeah. you shall know them. Right. Him, Jesus. By their fruits you shall know them. Amen. Seventh verse. Now we're closing. This is the last of the church age. I will be about five minutes later, ten. Just a minute. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Have your way, now, look, friends. Here's the way you overcome. First you have to overcome, then you can eat the fruit. Yes. Amen. It's the overcomer. Remember the other night, our teaching last night? John had to get in the Spirit before he saw anything. Amen. And how are you going to sit and if he's not bad, this I ain't going to listen to him. If he ain't Presbyterian, I ain't going to listen to him. If he don't teach just exactly what my church teaches, I, you, you, you ain't going to overcome. You ain't got the Spirit yet. Amen. You're all out of order. Get in the Spirit and say, Lord Jesus, I love you now. Reveal to me anything that you see fit. Just bring it into me. Then you're, then you're getting all right. That's right. Notice. Three times the Bible speaks of, of the tree of life in Genesis three times in the book of Revelation. The other day we had that. Remember Sunday yesterday? The only... The devil hates every bit of scripture there is. Right. But he hates worse Genesis and Revelation. He attacks Genesis because the authenticity of it, because he wants to make people believe that it wasn't so. 
Genesis didn't come about the way that God said they did. Right. That's something else caused this creation of yeah. Then he attacks it that way, and he takes people away from revelations because it reveals Jesus as being God and him being the devil and his doom. Yeah. And the glory of the sanctified church going home to God and the doom of the false prophet and all them and lie and do everything goes to be cast into the lake of fire. Uh, it's no wonder he keeps them away from it. But remember, both places speaks of the tree uh, of life in paradise. Now, Let's take this just a minute. And now the tree. St. John, the sixth chapter, if you want to mark it down. Jesus said, I am the, the, the bread of life. Yeah. Now remember. Now we're going to use these two posts as a symbol here. So just before closing. Now, now on my right hand is a tree in the garden called the tree of life. On my left hand is a tree in the garden that's called the tree of knowledge. How many know that the Bible says that it is a tree of life and a tree of knowledge? Amen. Now man was to live by this tree of life, not to touch the tree of knowledge. Is that right? Amen. And the first time he touched it, he separated himself from his creator. He lost his, his fellowship with God. When he took his first bite of knowledge. Uh, think hard now. When you write your notes, I'll give time so you can get it. Because I don't want you to miss this. Jesus and St. John 6, they were drinking from a fountain and throwing up their hands and putting on a mockery there that their fathers drank from the spiritual rock and so forth. He said, I'm that rock that was in the world. And they said... Here you're saying that you was before Abraham and you're a man not over 50 years old. And you say that you saw Abraham. We know that now that you're a mad, you're a devil. See? He said, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. I am as in the bush with Moses. Yeah. The burning bush. I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Not I was. Now, you people say the days of miracles is past. You have to make that scripture say, I was the great I was. <laughs> See? Not I was or I will be, I am. That's all the time. Yeah. He's eternal. Yeah. The word I am is an eternal. All of our age, all the time, and all seven golden candlesticks. Yeah, every church, every place, every heart. I am. Not I was or I will be, I am right now, as I always was. Yeah. <laughs> always. I am. They said, our fathers, we don't know you. We know you're a devil. Said, our fathers eat man in the wilderness for the space of 40 years. And Jesus said, and they're every one dead. Yes, amen. That right? Amen. They're all dead. But I, oh, I am the bread of life amen. that come from God out of heaven. If a bread of life, if a man eats this bread, he shall never die. Right, amen. Well, this man give his body to eat. He said, now he's mad, sure enough. The bread of life was from the tree of life where he was eating from the Garden of Eden. Uh, he was the tree of life. Now, if the tree of life was a person, then the tree of knowledge was a person. Yeah. Now I say the serpent didn't have a seed. <laughs> yeah. If... Life come by man, death come by the woman. Amen. All right, she was the tree of death. As soon as, as this one defiled her, which he did, the serpent, she said, the serpent beguile me. That's right, not a snake. He was the most subtle of all the beasts is between a Japan's and a man. Amen. Seed of an animal won't cross with a woman. Won't do it, but this fellow was. is the next thing to it. And God puts us a curse on him. He put him plumb back on his belly with no legs. And took every bone in him and changed it from anything like a man. Science trying to dig it up in a field. <laughs> That's Amen. hidden in the mysteries of God. Amen. In the middle of the paradise of God. There's your revelation. She brought forth her first son, which was Cain. Is that right? Amen. The son of Satan. Amen. Son of Satan. They didn't, where, did that, where did that evil come from? Out of Adam, which was the son of God? Come from the devil, yeah. his father. Yeah. And he murdered. First murder was the devil. 
They will son. Watch what happened. After that, watch the lineage of Cain. On down through that generation that followed after Cain was everyone scientist and great man. Amen. Read the Bible. Amen. They built houses. They worked with metal. and They were scientists. But everyone that come from Seth, which Abel died, a type of Jesus died, and Abel died, and Seth took his place, death, burial, and resurrection. From his come humble peasants, sheep herders. Come down through that. Now Jesus said, Your fathers eat manna in the wilderness, and they're all dead. But I am that bread of life. What bread of life? From Eden. That a man may eat of this bread and never die. Yeah. Now God put an angel around that tree of life to guard it, that no one could touch it unless they would eat that tree and live forever. Is that right? Yeah. Because they had to continue on this tree and die. Is that right? Yeah. Because as long as you had to eat to that, they died. And just as sure as you die because you eat from that tree of knowledge. Now let's look at that tree of knowledge now. Look what it's done. Now let's see what it's done. The first thing, let's see it. Well, let's see one thing. It admitted gunpowder. It kills our comrades. That's right. Kill one another gunpowder. Off the tree of knowledge. The next thing we've done, well, let's see, we, uh, we invent an automobile off that tree of knowledge. It kills more than gunpowder does. Oh, yeah. Now we've got a hydrogen bomb. God don't destroy nothing. Man destroys himself by his knowledge. Yeah. But all that belongs to God, God will raise it up again. God loses nothing. Amen. Jesus said so. Amen. That's right. He eats this bread as eternal life, and I'll raise him up again until I stay. That's his promise. Now, God, they went ahead eating on the tree of knowledge and dying, but as soon as they could get to this tree, they would live forever. Amen. So now, instead of an angel out there keeping them away from this tree, it's out there driving them around to this tree, the angels of the churches, the seven churches, bring them back. Amen. To the name of Jesus Christ, who is the tree of life. That stands in the paradise of God. Amen. Wow! I hope you get that. Amen. The tree of life. Standing in the paradise of God that you may partake of Him and become son and daughter of God and live forever. He that hears my words and believeth on Him and sent me has eternal life and shall never come into the judgment but pass from death unto life. Amen. Brother, sister, now, I'm, I'm sure I've, uh, I've cut you, hurt you. I, I didn't mean to do it that way. See, God knows that. But I've got to do it this way to let you see where we're at. Yeah, I don't believe we have very much longer to stay. I'm not trying to unchristianize you because you belong to an organization. That's not it. The people are a victim of circumstances. They don't know nothing to do. All their parents has always done is go jar in church and things. But, brother, one thing before we leave, let me make this one more quotation. The prophet said, you believe the prophets? Yeah. The Bible said to listen to them. The prophet said there would come... A, a time that there wouldn't be neither day nor night, but it'd be a kind of a dismal day. Uh, but in the evening time, just before the sun sets, it shall be light. Is that right? Now, look what we've had. Now, let's just look. How does the, where's the sun raise geographically? In the east. Is that right? It sets in the west. I wish I had... I'll take the map tomorrow night and show you. When the Holy Ghost fell in Jerusalem, it made a perfect figure eight. It's tracked. It goes right straight across up into Ireland, right back around, right over. It comes to the west coast and falls right back again. A perfect figure eight where the gospel went. Now, civilization has traveled with the sun. How many knows that? You've been taught that and know it. The oldest civilization we have is China. And then from that, she come right on across in the Oriental. And when the Holy Ghost, not uh, S. U-N, but S-O-N. When the sun, the S-U-N, begins to shine uh, down through the fog and mist of night, no matter where the seed is, it'll live. Because all botany life lives by the sun. We know that. You can pour concrete right across a piece of grass. And next spring, where is the thickest grass? 
right out at the end of the concrete. Why? It's that life. Beneath there, you can't hide real life. That little life, as soon as it knows that sun's bathing through there, it'll worm its way for a half a city block almost. Getting around under that concrete till it can stick its head out of the air and go to praising God. Amen. You can't hide life. Amen. That's right, life. When you're born again, you can't hide it. Amen. Something's got to cry out Amen. when you've got life. Now, all things that's dead now, and the, the little seeds are bursting open, the pulp's run out, and it's dead. But the life is still there. Now when the sun begins to shine in spring, the little flowers will come up and everything will stick its head up again, out from under the chips, out from under the logs, out from under the rocks, it'll raise up again and live again. Is that right? Because the S-U-N is shining. Now, someday the S-O-N will shine, which is the author of eternal life. And everything has been germatized to him from eternal life he said, I'll raise it up in the last days. You see what I mean? Eternal life will be raised in the last days. If they bury in the sea, they burn your uh, body and swing it to the four winds of the earth. God will raise it up in the last days. If you have to fill the belly of a hungry lion or, or go into a flaming pit that will take all the, the, uh, the 16 petroleums and the cosmic lights and everything out of you. God will raise it up the very hairs of your head is numbered. Amen. God will raise it up. Now, look here. Now, if every man dies by the woman, then every man lives by the man. Partake of the woman in that kind of life, you know you die. There's no way out of it, you're going to die. Amen. And as sure as you take of that, you're going to live. There's no way out of it, you got to live. Amen. Amen. If that produces death positive, this produces life positive. Amen. That's the only way you can receive it, is to have life. Now the prophet said that it'll be light in the evening time. Now look, he said there'll be a day that it'll be dismal. It will be called day or night. It's kind of a cloudy, misty, cold day. But yet the sun's giving the light way up above that fogs and clouds and so forth. The sun's giving the light. It gives enough light. You can walk and you can see how to get around and so forth. But yet it isn't bright, pretty day, see? Now, nothing hardly can live in that day. If you plant anything under where the sun don't hit it, it's dwarfed. Isn't that right? You farmers know that. Put the corn over in the shade or somewhere. What? It dwarfs it. Fred, you ought to know that by your wheat. You put it out there, if you have a bad summer, all cold and rainy, it dwarfs it. Well, that's what's the matter with the church down through these ages. It's been dwarfed. It's been dwarfed by denominations. Put your name on the road. We've had enough light to know that there is a God. I'm glad of that. We've had enough light to know that there is a Christ. There is a coming judgment. We've had light. So we put our names on the books. We shook hands with the pastor. Show forth and done that. All right. But now it's evening time. Now, civilization come from the east and to the west, and now we're on the west coast. We can't go no farther. We cross over, we're back in the east again. We can't go no farther, we're at the west coast. Now, the Bible says in the evening time the light would come. Now, what kind of a sun that shines in the evening time? Is it a different sun from rises in the morning? It's the same sun, is that right? Well, then what did God promise? Now, we're going to get to this. Hold it. Right down here at this age. The Bible said, so I prove these church ages as we go on. That in the evening time, there would come a light break forth in the west that would bring back the Son of Righteousness again with healing in His wings and the same signs and the same wonders that was done back here in the east will be done over here in the west with another pouring out of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. It shall be like in the evening time the path of glory you will surely find in that waterway. It's the light today buried in the precious name of Jesus. Young and old, repent of all your sins. The Holy Ghost will surely enter in. The evening lights have come. It is the fact that God and Christ are one. Amen. Oh, it shall be light in the evening time. That path of glory you will surely find. Yes. 
in this waterway is a light today buried in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Young and old, repent of all your sins. The Holy Ghost will surely enter in. Those evening lights have come. Same thing that Peter said. Let it be known to you that God has made the same Jesus who you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Amen. Amen. Repent of every one of you, say. Amen. Be baptized in the name of Jesus yes. Christ Amen. for the remission of your sins. Let me tell you something. So I was speaking the other day upon the doctor's prescription. People don't like to take the doctor's prescription. If he's got a, a remedy that will cure your sickness and you refuse, you refuse to take it, it ain't the doctor's fault that you die. Right. No, sir, it's your fault because you refuse to take it. And now, if the doctor writes a prescription and, he, and you take that prescription to a quack druggist and he puts something in there that ought to be in there, it'll kill you too. Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. That doctor has studied that so he knows there's so much of that prescription it's poison to kill that bug that's in your body. And there's enough antidote in there to upset the poison that it won't kill you. And it's got to be level. If you put too much antidote, it won't help the patient. Put too much poison, it'll kill him. It's got to be balanced. Amen. The question was, is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Said the prophet, then why is the disease of my daughter not healed? What's the matter with the church? What's the matter we've got too many old sick churches? Because we've had some quack druggists giving out the prescription wrong. He never said, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. What did the prescription say? Here's Peter. How many knows he had the keys to the kingdom? Amen. Jesus said so. What did he say? In other words, he's got the ink pen for the prescription. When they heard this all noise abroad, they were screaming, shouting, speaking in tongues, and having such a time. And they said, these men are full of new wine. Peter said, these are not full of new wine, as you suppose, to use third hour of the day, but this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. Yes, It'll come to pass when they say, it says, God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy upon my hands, maids and maids, sir, will I pour out of my spirit. And they shall prophesy, and I'll show signs in the heavens above and in the earth below, fire and smoke and vapor. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall, not, uh, shall be saved. And furthermore did he say about David, he said, Patriarch David foresaw it. He said, Moreover, my flesh shall rest in hope, because will not leave my soul in hell, neither will he suffer his holy one to see corruption. Let me freely speak to you, brethren of the Patriarch David. He's both dead and buried in his sepulchers with us unto this day. See, but he, being a prophet, saw the resurrection of Christ. Let it be known to you that this Jesus that you have crucified, with wicked hands, God has made him both Lord and Christ. Amen. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said, Man and brother, are Dr. Simon Peter? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right off the prescription. How can we get this? We want a cure for sin. Oh. I'll lock you what he said. Now you find out where these churches got off the track. He said, wait a minute, I'm going to write a prescription and it's going to be an eternal prescription. Amen. It'll be for you and for your children and to them it's far off and it's even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. What did he say? How do you fix it? Like the Catholic has it, like the Baptist has it, like the Methodist has it, every one of them has added something or taken something from it. Yeah. Amen. Like the Pentecostals, they added or took away. Yeah. But what did he say? Repent every one of you. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. An eternal prescription. It's for you and your children. This will last all down to every church age. Give it to every one of them. Oh, God, cleanse my hands. Cleanse my heart, Lord. May if it takes every friend I got. Let me give a prescription the way the doctor said, Give it. That's where you got so many dead churches, so many dead members. You're adding antidote and taking so much away from it, so the prescription ain't itself at all. It won't even heal nothing. Amen. Shaking hands and joining churches and sprinkling. Oh, mercy. That's not the prescription, that's death. If you want life and want the Holy Ghost, follow what God said do. Amen. Take the prescription. That's exactly what he said. Don't add to it or take away from it. Then here comes the revelation right over and said, whoever will take away or add to the same will be taking his part out of the book of life. Yes, amen. Oh my, that's the main doctor. 
Oh, I'm loving, don't you? Yeah. Oh, to that great age of the Ephesian age, when the heresy just began to creep in to make organizations and pastors and deacons, or not deacons, but pastors, not pastors, but cardinals, bishops, popes, overseers of the church, telling the Holy Spirit, telling the church, oh, you cannot have that in here. Who's the boss anyhow? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Peter was asked that one time. said, you can't preach anymore in Jesus' name. You can preach if you want to, but not in Jesus' name. Oh, the devil hates that name. Amen. Peter said, is it right for me to... The Bible said, Peter being full of the denomination of oh, uh, the Holy Ghost. He said, wait, I'll go see the general overseer and see what he tells me to do about this. Let me tell you, you know the Assemblies of God has a psychiatrist to judge and to go take their missionaries before a psychiatrist to see if that man is mentally able to be a missionary? My God, my God. Pentecostal Assemblies of God. How many ever heard that? Who is to look the missionary over and be the judge, the psychiatrist or the Holy Ghost? See, that's what you get in having man. Man-made theories, man-made doctrines. Wait till we get out of that Pentecostal age. God will burn that thing up as he sure as the world. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. And you're still catching the fire all the way down. <laughs> exactly. But some glorious day, he'll come. And remember, listen, there's seven church ages. Is that right? There's seven church ages. And remember... When they went out to meet the bride, bridegroom, some fell asleep in the first watch. Is that right? The second watch, third, not, not died, fell asleep. Third watch, fourth watch, fifth watch, sixth watch. And in the seventh watch, a sound came. Behold, the bridegroom coming. Amen. Go ye out to meet him. What happened? All those virgins that slept wakened. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dearly Christ shall rise, cloudless the uh, evening lights will be shining, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved on earth shall gather to their homes beyond the sky, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there.
heads bowed now. Let's say this. Lord Jesus, I love you. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. God made manifest in the flesh to take away my sins. I do not trust my merits. I have none. But I am solemnly trusting in the merits of Jesus Christ, who is my Savior, my God, our King. I love Him. Amen. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, the Lord willing, we'll take the church of Samaria. In the sweet, with your head bowed now. Oh, to our bountiful Father.